Hi, y'all. I'm Paula Dean, and today we're headed back to my hometown of Albany, Georgia, to meet up with my Aunt Peggy and our favorite fisherman for the catch of the day. Bass, that is. Once we get our fish, we'll have to fly back to the kitchen where we're gonna cook it up southern style with the corniest cornbread you've ever had. And then for the best part of the meal, dessert. And I don't mean just any dessert, but the chocolate gooey butter cake. And finally, we'll finish up with a spinach, strawberry, and hearts of palm salad that'll keep them coming back for seconds. So y'all grab your tackle box, jump into your rowboat, and come along for the ride. Nice treat plan for today's shows. I grew up in the part of Georgia that's just abundant with fabulous plantations, and everybody would hunt and fish. In fact, celebrities would come. And I remember as a little girl, President Eisenhower coming in all the time to go on these plantations and shoot quail. Well, today, I'm going on Winfield Plantation, where I'm gonna do some bass fishing along with a precious little lady named Aunt Peggy. And I promise you, she'll be full of fish tales and stories, so y'all don't miss it. I want you to come fishing with me and see where I grew up. Hey, you two. Hi there. Hey. What are you doing out here cohorting with my favorite fishing buddy? Waiting on you to show my up. Aunt Peggy, is she learning all your tricks? <laughs> y'all ready to go fishing? Ready enough? So We're good jumping. To see you. I've already named my fish. Huh? <laughs> You've already given them a name. I gave them birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't hardly wait to see who's gonna outfish the other. My Aunt Peggy is truly, I, I would rather fish with her than eat when I'm hungry. Is she, is she already cast? No, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I just don't want you to get too far ahead of me. I got a fish, I got it, I got it, uh -oh. I got it. He didn't know the gun was loaded. <laughs> <laughs> where did you hook him? In the mouth. Where were I? <laughs> I, I was speaking of the water. <laughs> oh. Now that you got your fish, we got maybe just an hour or two more of lazy time. And then I gotta get in the kitchen, Peggy. That was so much fun. Do you just love my Aunt Peggy or what? She's a hoot. In fact, I wish every family could have an Aunt Peggy. I just adore her. In fact, she really took care of me good today. She even went ahead and filleted our fish for us and got it ready for me. So. I'm all ready to get going with the cooking. And I tell you what, I was so busy laughing at her stories. I didn't have too much luck fishing today. I think it's cause my pole was jiggling so from me laughing. All right, isn't that a pretty filet? Now we have taken our bass and all I'm gonna do is just smother it with fresh lemon juice. Now I'm gonna use a nice coarse salt on it and a little fresh black pepper. And to me, fish really needs that salt, so don't forget that. All right, now we're gonna put a very light breading on this fish. We're gonna start with our ordinary cup of breadcrumbs, Romano cheese, and we're gonna put in about a tablespoon of garlic powder. And because this fish only will be cooking for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna add just a little paprika to that because the paprika will help our fish to brown. We're just gonna toss those together. Just for color, we're gonna do just a little fresh parsley. We'll toss it in, and those flakes of green leaves will be awfully pretty in there. And then we're gonna take our fish and just dredge it in those breadcrumbs like that, and put it on a parchment-lined shallow baking dish, because you want to be able to let that heat get straight to your fish. Now we're gonna pop this into a preheated 425 degree oven. But before we put it in the oven, one last little tip. I'm gonna drizzle it with just a little olive oil. And that olive oil is gonna help it to brown and keep it moist and tender. So, 425 for about 10 minutes. And while our fish is baking, I'm gonna mix up the bread to go with it. 
and I'm probably making my all-time favorite cornbread today. Now we're gonna start with a self-rising meal. I would actually recommend maybe a medium ground on your meal. And we're gonna add to that about three-fourths of a cup of self-rising flour. And a couple of eggs. And if you want this dish hot, you can add a little cayenne pepper. Now, if you're feeding the children, you might want to back off on this, but I'm going to put just a little bit. Now, I'm fixing to add a cream corn to it. Now, this is canned cream corn, but I highly recommend that if you've got fresh, to grate fresh corn and use it. They also make a, a nice fresh corn that's frozen in your freezer section at your grocery store. So if you can get that, I recommend that. And this is what makes the cornbread so good. It's sour cream. And the last ingredient is just a vegetable oil. And we're just gonna mix that up. And cornbread doesn't take a whole bunch of mixing. You don't wanna mix this with like an electric mix or anything. Ooh, and I can smell that corn. Now for our last ingredient, we're gonna throw in some cheddar cheese and stir that together. Now, if for some reason you don't want the cheese, it's fine, all you have to do is leave it out. And while I was mixing this up, I actually had our molds in the oven getting hot. The molds are in this oven. And look at these adorable little fish-shaped molds. So we've gotten that good and hot, so as we fill our batter in it, it's gonna immediately start sizzling and browning so it'll have a crispy edge. You can see the cornbread starting to cook and you can hear it sizzling. Aren't those just the cutest things you ever saw? All right, we wanna make sure that as we fill our mold that we get it all the way back in the tail so the fish will be shaped right. And you can see that I grease these very, very well before I heated them. All right, those are ready to go in the oven. Okay, the bread's in the oven and I'm gonna check the fish now. This is actual cooking time on this fish, no stopping or starting. So it's been in about 10 minutes. Oh, and it looks just delicious and smells even better. Look at that. I think I wanna try that piece right there, that nice fat one. Oh, I think I want that piece right there. And a couple of onions. We can't eat a fish down south without a spring onion. And I've got some cornbread that should be ready. This actually baked, oh, about 15, 18 minutes. And this should pop out because I greased that pan so well. Look at that cute little fish. Isn't he the cutest thing? Oh, I love those molds. That looks so good, I can't wait to taste it. So here goes, I'm gonna try Aunt Peggy's fish. along with a little fish tail. So good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Guess what? You think you like my pumpkin gooey butter cakes? Coming up next, I'm gonna be showing you my double chocolate gooey butter cakes. So y'all don't go anywhere. I'm getting that oven heated up to make the most wonderful gooey butter cake you've ever tasted. Now we're gonna start with an ordinary chocolate cake mix. Do y'all remember when I made my pumpkin gooey butter cakes at Thanksgiving? And those are so good, but I can't hardly wait for y'all to taste these. All right, now we've got our chocolate cake mix. We're gonna add one egg and one stick of melted butter. All the bases will always be the same to a gooey butter cake. One stick of melted butter and one egg. All right, we're gonna come over here to our mixer and we wanna make sure that we've got our setting for our large bowl so it'll come around the sides and get it all good.
So this doesn't take but a minute. We just want to get those dry ingredients moist. And that's it. I'm not even going to clean those beaters because for our filling, we're using chocolate anyway, so it won't matter. And then in this bowl, I'm going to use an eight ounce package of softened cream cheese. I'm going to mix that up a little bit, just kind of beating and soften that a little bit. Add one 16 ounce package of powdered sugar, a couple of tablespoons of cocoa, one stick of melted butter, for those that are counting, I think that's two sticks of butter. Two eggs. Yeah, these ain't called gooey for nothing, y'all. Between the eggs and the butter, teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're just gonna whip that until it's nice and fluffy. Okay, that looks good. All right, now we're gonna add about a cup of nuts, and we're using a chopped walnut. One day I was coming through the kitchen and somebody hollered, Paula, Paula, come here. And I went over there to the baker's section and they said, we want you to taste this. We've come up with a new gooey butter cake. I said, I didn't think there was any left. What have you done? And the baker said, a double chocolate gooey. And I said, honey, hush your mouth. <laughs> Let me taste that thing. I could not get over it. So in no time, the double chocolate gooey was, was a favorite. All right, now I'm going to take a 13 by 9 by 2 pan, grease it lightly. There's plenty of butter in here, but I just want to make sure it doesn't stick. So we're going to take our base batter, and you can see how stiff it is. It's almost like a Play-Doh. Get this pan up here so I can press it in there good. And we're just gonna spread that out and distribute that bottom as evenly as we can. You know, we're always in search of a new gooey butter cake flavor. So if you guys and girls out there have come up with any, let me know, cause I'd love to try them. All right, so we're just gonna pour that on top. Now you can put as much chocolate in that as you want. I have a tendency to like a lighter chocolate. I love milk chocolate. Now we're gonna run this into our 350 degree preheated oven. Now the one thing I wanna warn you about the gooey butter cake is you don't wanna overcook it because you, it's called gooey for a reason. It should have a gooey center. So you should actually be able to shake your pan and it have just a little movement in it. So you know that that center is still gooey. So you'll want to watch this because your oven may be different from mine. But so start checking around 30 or 35 minutes. Now I've got one cool in here in the window. It's nice and cool and ready to cut and ready to taste. He looks so delicious. Now, I don't know what size you would want to serve your family, but this is about the size that I serve mine. And I love fresh whipped cream. Don't act surprised. But I love fresh whipped cream with my gooey butter cakes. And I just happen to have a little bit. Does it look divine or what? Coming up next, some lettuce. All right, I've got our spinach leaves. They're washed and over here draining. You know, the gooey butter cake is really a hard act to follow, but I'm gonna give this my best shot. So y'all stay with me and try to pretend like you're excited about this lettuce, okay? <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. This'll make you feel better. Three-fourths of a cup of sugar. Pinch of salt. And about two tablespoons 
of lemon juice. We're gonna let this heat just until the sugar dissolves, and then this is what we're gonna wind up with. All right, we're gonna add a teaspoon of dried mustard, some poppy seed, a little paprika for color, a little grated purple onion. I'm probably not gonna use too, too much because, whoo, it's strong. You can actually see all the juice and then some oil. And you noticed I've got this all in a jar so that we can just shake it rather than pulling out a mixer or a Cuisinart. We're just gonna give it a few shakes. That's it, isn't that pretty? Our spinach should be drained. And you wanna make sure that it is nice and drained. You don't want any water. Okay, now to our spinach. We're gonna add heart of palm. I'm using about one can. And when you remove it from the can, it'll come in like a stick. It almost looks like a little stick of mozzarella, doesn't it? I love this stuff in a salad. It gives it such flavor and nice texture. All right, and we're gonna toss in some fresh strawberries. Aren't those pretty and red and ripe? So that really kind of jazzes up this spinach. And then we're gonna toss in about a half a cup of broken walnuts. And then we're just gonna toss those together. Just like that, give it a gentle toss. Oh, it's looking pretty. The colors are really beautiful. All right, now I'm gonna shake this up. As you know, oil doesn't always mix in with your other ingredients. So we'll wanna shake that up and really very quickly pour a little bit onto our salad while it's mixed. And I wouldn't go too heavy with the dressing just enough to wet your leaves. And then you can pour some of this up into a little container and then you can just let your guests add more dressing if they like. Look how pretty that is. It really is a delicious salad. And the strawberries are just a nice change from a tomato. And right, I'm gonna dip me up a little bit to try. This is gonna be great along with the fish. It'll be a nice, light side. Mmm. It's so good. Your different flavors are so nice together. The heart of palm along with the, the sweetness of the strawberry is so good. It's gonna be just delicious with our fish. Y'all stick around, cause I've got a few more fish tails for you. So y'all come back. Okay, a few last tips for y'all. On your lettuce, on, when you come in from the grocery store with your lettuce, take it and wash it good and dry it. You can actually pat it lightly, but you don't wanna crush your lettuce because it will bruise it. We wanna make sure it's dried nicely, and then I'm just gonna slip it into Ziploc bags with paper towels, and it'll store so good, it just gets crispier and crispier, and it'll store nicely for a few days. And if you don't have a microplaner, go find you one. These are the best little tricks for zesting. See how easy that is? And you don't have to worry about getting the white part. And if you wanna dress up your plate just a little bit more with some extra Romano, just use an ordinary potato peeler and do you some curls on it. Isn't that pretty? And on your fish, even filleting it, Sometimes some long bones can be left in it. A good trick is laying this over a bowl so that the bones stick up. Run your finger down the opposite way and just use ordinary house pliers and then you can just pull those bones right out. And that's all the fishtails I got for y'all today. I had such a great time today fishing with my Aunt Peggy and listening to her stories about my granddaddy Paul and him trout fishing. And I hope on your fishing day that you come home with a good catch and possibly do some of these dishes like the Romano baked bass and the strawberry and heart of palm spinach salad is wonderful. And these adorable little corny cornbread fishes and the double chocolate gooey butter cake you just can't beat. 
I wish y'all good luck on your fishing day. And as always, America, I send you love and best dishes from my kitchen to yours. Happy fishing.